Hello. Recent events made me think uh, about the story of Jesus. When, when Jesus sent the disciples on mission two by two to cast out demons and heal the, the sick. And, and today in the 21st century, uh, we don't really believe in demons like the, the guy in red with the horns and the fork. and the, So in progressive church like ours, uh, we tr try to look at the historical context that might explain why people 2,000 years ago were seeing demons back then and that today we look differently with all the knowledge we have and all the science at our disposal. Still, I keep wondering what would demons be today? And that's, that's, that's a very interesting question. And I believe that all of us has this part inside of ourselves that is maybe darker, that is might be in pain, that might be a side of ourselves that it's a bit more problematic. And we might deny it, we might ignore it, but it's still there. And often it's not a question about is it good part, is it bad? You know, with, with demon, we have this connotation of something very, very uh, negative. But uh, it is sometimes it is something with which we struggle. And there's, it is what it is. Uh, and it could be found in many forms. Uh, many are talking about demons when they talk about addiction, Ma various forms of addiction. It could be opiates, uh, gambling, uh, drinking, eating. Um, other talk about uh, demons when it comes to from to, it comes to mental illness, depression, anxiety, uh, or anything else. Anything else that is usually not visible from the outside, but still affect our lives. And many do not know how to react when the, someone else will share that, when they're confronted to this uh, reality. Uh, I will take my example, not because I'm uh, better, smarter, it's just I need an example and since I, it's my story, I'm quite comfortable to share it. Um, I have some would call disease condition. I have type 2 diabetes and like many people in North America and I'm taking my medication, I'm trying to exercise as much as possible, checking my blood sugar, it's fairly under control. I have sleep apnea. That means that when I'm sleeping, my brain uh, forget to send the message like breathe Stefan <laughs> for, for many seconds. So for maybe for two or f three, five seconds, I'm not breathing and then I will do kind of wake up and say <gasps> and do that and I will wake up for a very small portion of a second, meaning that um, uh, I do not really sleep well, but now I have this CPAP machine. A lot of people have those, and that helped me to sleep. Does not solve the problem, helped me to sleep. And also, I have general anxiety. And I've, taking, I've t been taking antidepressant for the last 18 years. All is great uh, with those medication. Uh, when I don't forget to take them, which it happens sometimes, you know, but all is great. And all these three disease, illnesses, condition are not a big deal, I can function, but experience taught me that the last one, the anxiety one, uh, tend to make people more uncomfortable because there's some sort of taboo people don't know what to say when it comes to what is considered a mental illness. But diabetes, sleep apnea, I could have said that high blood pressure, which I don't have, people can, you know, they will take it, they can relate. A mental illness, they, they, they're not sure. And often the surprise is that it does not show from the exterior and our day-by-day -day activities, 
it's not written on their forehead, <laughs> you know. Uh, but some days uh, we have to wrestle with it, with those conditions. And I believe as disciple of Jesus, as believer, as Christian, or whatever uh, label we want to use, uh, we have a role to play in this. Not to cure or cast out those demons by faith, by belief, by... I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. What we can do is to be courageous enough to have a conversation about it to broke those taboo, to create a safe space when people can share, can, can be comfortable, can be welcome. We can also say something like, if you struggle, if you struggle right now, there's a phone number across Canada, 1-866-996-0991. That's the crisis number from across Canada 24-7. And saying, if you struggle, sorry, if you struggle, please call now. Don't wait. If you have a loved one who is struggling, please call now. There are also people who can help you to help your friend, your loved one. And that's, I guess, the third point what we can do in our community of faith also is we can reach out to the person sometimes sitting next to us. Because like I say, it's invisible. We don't know. We don't know when people are struggling, when are maybe fighting with those demons inside of themselves. And reach out not to judge, of course, not to try to solve our problems. It's often is just offering compassion, offering love, offering some presence, listening. Sometimes it makes all the difference in the world for the person who are struggling. And it takes so little of our time. And that's, I think, the part of Jesus and the story is maybe the disciples were not, you know, doing this spectacular exorcism like we see in movie. Maybe that was also this part of just listening. Just saying, you know, Thank you for sharing. I will keep a secret if you want to keep a secret. I will help you if you want to help you. I will journey with you. And I think we need to do that. We need to do that to help people who are struggling. Once again, if you're struggling, there's a number. Please call 1-866-996-0991 if you're in Canada. Reach out to one another. Let us care for one another. That will be all for today. I will take a break for summer because I will be on holiday because I will attend the General Council of the United Church of Canada. That will be in a few weeks in Oshawa. And I will attend as a French speaking reporter. So until then, take care of yourself. I remain Stéphane Vermette, the lectionary guy, and see you soon. Bye-bye.